What up 150 decision makers? Uh, wanted to get a video out. I apologize uh, for not having the video out on Wednesday like I normally am supposed to. I'm uh, gonna work on being better at that uh, for some reason with this week. No real excuses other than just, I kept flaking it and today I was like, okay, I've absolutely gotta get this done. So uh, working on getting this done and out as quick as possible. You can expect another video on Sunday and there will also be a special September 11th uh, video uh, on uh, Monday, uh, whatever day September 11th is, I think it's Monday. But I uh, just wanted to be able to give you a heads up on those next three coming up. So up until this next Wednesday, you're gonna have a quick succession of about four different videos about every other day. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy that at least. Give me any feedback, thoughts in the comments uh, below, but let's go ahead and move forward because I only got four minutes left. Uh, today, I wanted to talk briefly about an experience I had last year uh, with a particular football player named Tom Brady. It was during the whole deflate gate, uh, or yeah, deflate gate thing as uh, the sports world termed it. And uh, I kind of developed a bit of a hatred for the guy, to be honest. Uh, and I actually resented whenever he would win games and things like that. And then one day I was talking with one of my good friends, JJ Strotter, hashtag call out. Uh, and wanted to, and I was talking about this with him, and he brought up some good questions. And that's kind of the, some of the questions I want to be able to bring up today. Um, one of the things that we talked about was just learning about maybe the people that you dislike. Now, there's people you hate that are legitimately bad people, like Adolf Hitler, okay? Maybe learning stuff about him is just educational, but what I did with Tom Brady was I watched, there was a documentary about 45 minutes long, it's on YouTube. Um, I'll find it actually. I'll link it down in the um, I'll, I'll link it down in the description below. But I was so impressed with all the barriers and obstacles that he had, not only through high school, and through college, and through the NFL, and that he just put in work. And by the end of the video, I just I was like, okay, I don't I'm not the person making the decision about the whole Deflate Gate thing, but. I can't deny that this guy went through work, this guy went through adversity, this guy went through struggle, and he is succeeding on the highest level in what he loves and what he wants to be able to do. And so I have, I have at this point, you know, I'm not a, saying I'm a Patriots fan, I'm not, you know, as, as far as that goes, but uh, what I am saying is that I have a whole level of respect for him as a person and the work ethic that he puts in to his craft and being the best that he can be. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, just the whole idea of learning about someone and, and doing that. Uh, so a, a question that JJ and I would talk about is why do we resent or despise greatness? Why is it that when we see someone doing so well, um, especially if they're fighting against our team, that we all of a sudden are like, oh, they're just a bad person. or They must be cheating all the time or, you know, things like that. Or they must have slept their way to the top, as uh, a, a term has been used in business, uh, un un unfortunately, for successful women. Uh, you know, there's all these excuses that people give, but don't those excuses really reveal something more about ourselves inside? Are we not all looking, in a sense, for a shortcut to that success? And we think that because somebody else got that success, maybe they were lucky or they found a shortcut somewhere. They have a secret that they're keeping away from everybody else so that way they can win and they, and, and they can ultimately be successful. Um, I don't know, but those were some of the thoughts that JJ and I had. It was, it, it's interesting because we applaud greatness in one part, but when that greatness is put against maybe our team, uh, all of a sudden there's some sort of demonization that goes on uh, with that person who does so well and performs so well. Uh, this last Super Bowl, uh, 20, yeah, the 2017, well, at least the 2016 season, but 2017 year uh, Super Bowl uh, is a good example of that. You know, there were many people who on one side were like, wow, Tom Brady pulled off something that no one ever has before. And then on the other side, you had the other half, uh, just the haters saying, oh, he cheated or the calls were terrible, things like that. It doesn't matter whether the calls were terrible. The refs were basically the same throughout the whole game. It, it's the ref is a human element in the game that everybody accepts. It's when it doesn't go their way that they don't accept it and they don't like it. So, uh, but anyway, so, th so th th those are just some thoughts I want to be able to throw out. Now, again, this is more to be able to spur some discussion. I'm, I'm going to, looks like I'm going to be going over my time a bit. So I do apologize for that, but I'm going to work through some of these. Um, 
uh, one of the things I, I, I think about a lot is um, in, in the Book of Mormon, uh, I'm a Latter-day Saint if you haven't probably noticed or kind of caught on a, a, a to that. In the Book of Mormon, there's a, there's a chapter called Fourth Nephi. And basically what it's about is it talks about uh, the time or, or the American civilization after the time that Christ visited the Americas. And what is powerful about that time is that the things that Christ taught the people, all of them became united in those thoughts and in that, in, and in that practice of faith. They became one, uh, spiritually speaking, as far as in that way. And when they became one, the, the chapter describes in one of the verses saying that there were no manner of ites, I-T-E-S. In other words, there were no divisions of the people. There wasn't rich, there wasn't poor. Uh, there wasn't educated, there wasn't uneducated. Everybody had, everybody was equal, everybody was uh, encouraged and looked at as far as in an equal manner. Uh, and so there weren't those divisions. But then I look at rivalries like, uh, you know, I'll just call it out, probably get a little hate mail on this, but uh, the U of U and the BYU ri rivalry in Utah. Um, now, I haven't participated directly in it. I'm not, you know, a fan particularly of either one, even though my wife is a BYU graduate, uh, but we've talked about it, and it just gets downright brutal sometimes. I mean, either side will demonize the other side. As I said before, they make them out to be such terrible people when it's supposed to be just a healthy rivalry, but it even comes down to where some BYU parents will not let their kids play with U of U parents, or vice versa. Uh, there, there becomes this division and this decision in humanity when really, instead of looking at what's different about us, it should be just like, it's just a, it's just a football game. It's just meant to be something where two people, uh, well, not obviously two people, but two teams go up against each other and they have an opportunity to be able to see who can win, who can out strategize the other. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because one beats the other, that the other one is terrible or awful or anything like that. It's more just, uh, it's more just an idea of being able to have some healthy competition and enjoy that, and in a spirit of good sportsmanship, hopefully be able to walk off the field shaking hands, not trying to hit each other up the side of the head or start some fights. Um, you know, you, you see some of this stuff as far as in, in, in sports where people even shoot each other. Uh, and it just, that, that division, just because you think differently, goes into so many other levels. And I know we could talk about on a whole, uh, uh, we could talk about that a while, and I, and, and I hope you do. You know, just leave some comments and we'll work on, you know, maybe this weekend we can work on uh, responding to each other and talking about it. And if needed, I can even make another video on this. I'm already going terribly long. Thank you for your patience staying with me. Um, I have one challenge uh, as far as to be able to give you. Well, two challenges actually. One, uh, I would love to hear about maybe an experience that you have. Challenge you this weekend. Think of someone that you don't particularly like. Again, for me, it was Tom Brady. For you... It may be some other sports figure. It may be some uh, just other person, some other prominent person. Maybe it's even an actor, something like that. YouTube has so much information, so many videos, so many biographies, things like that. It's just there for the taking. Take a look and see what you can find out about that person. Discover maybe what their struggles were. What were their life background? Things like that. Um, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. has totally recreated himself in so many ways from being a drug addict to starting the whole, in a sense, single-handedly starting the Marvel franchise uh, with Iron Man. And so, you know, there'd be some people who'd be like, oh, well, he was a drug addict, he was terrible, and, you know, things like that, he's an awful person and stuff, but then he changes, and now now so many people love him and uh, like what he stands for now and, and, and what he's trying to do. Um, so that's my first challenge. Look for somebody that uh, you don't necessarily like, but someone that you can learn about. Uh, and you may be surprised as far as how you feel about them after you discover more about them. The other thing is, I, cha I challenge you throughout your life to appreciate greatness wherever it comes from. Even if it comes from the opposing team, uh, appreciate, excuse me, appreciate that greatness. Appreciate that, you know what, there's somebody else who, even though my team was maybe doing really well, all of a sudden they pull it off and my team is lost. Instead of, and I mean, as much as you will probably focus on, oh man, my team blew the game and I feel terrible and stuff. But then at the same time, I would challenge you to take a moment and think, wow, the other team was like two or three touchdowns behind in the fourth quarter and they were able to pull it off. They did it. 
Uh, and so appreciating that greatness, appreciating that effort and understanding that any win at all is never by luck, but through work and consistent practice. Uh, and so anyway, hope this gave you guys some thoughts just to be able to start out with. I know this video is twice as long as what I intend these videos to be. Uh, but thank you so much for staying with me. Uh, I just feel like the topic itself deserved, uh, be, as, as I've been, I was, I was talking, it's like, okay, it's going to deserve the time. Uh, I hope it stimulates some good discussion and some good thoughts regarding, you know, what we can do, even just as a human race, to be able to come together more, uh, to stop looking at all the things that divide us. You know, I mean, the thing that all football fans have in common is that they enjoy football. They may not like the same team, but they all enjoy football. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, start looking at what brings us together instead of apart. Uh, it seems like there's plenty to drive us apart. And that's definitely not something that we need as, as communities and as people. So, uh, as I, as I uh, say, just stay strong. Uh, keep making those 1.50 a.m. decisions. And I'm looking, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing comments and thoughts down below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.